is a short video about the Sequential Circuits drum tracks. If you want to download the sample pack and get on with your day, then the link is in the description. But if you'd like to know more, stick around. Sequential circuits are, of course, one of the most famous synth pioneers, but they also dabbled in digital drum machines in the early 80s, which was a cutting-edge technology at the time. The first digital drum machine was the Lin LM1 in 1979, and this was followed by the Lin Drum in 1982. Now, the main competitor of the Lin Drum was the Oberheim DMX, and both these units cost just shy of $3,000 at the time, which is around $7,000 or £5,500 when adjusted for inflation. So these were obviously premium instruments meant for top recording artists and studios. At the other end of the spectrum, home users were generally able to afford drum machines that used the older analog means to produce sounds and that would employ a digital sequencer to allow you to program them. For example, the Boss Dr. Rhythm series, the Roland TR606 and CR8000, and the Korg KPR77 to name but a few. There was therefore a gap for mid-range products and into that void came instruments such as the Oberheim DX, the Emu Drumulator, the analog digital hybrid Roland TR909 and the fully digital TR707, the MXR185 and of course the sequential drum tracks. Most of these instruments cost around $1300 at the time which converts to about $3000 or £2400 in today's money. So they were still quite serious pieces of kit, but they were less than half the price of the Lindrum and DMX. In order to achieve that, some compromises had to be made, and the Drum Tracks is no exception in that regard, as we'll see. The Drum Tracks was designed by Dave Smith, Steve Solani, Donna Murray and Chris Meyer, who incidentally worked on the Profit VS and who runs the Learning Modular channel on YouTube, which I've linked in the description. According to the brilliant book The Profit from Silicon Valley by David Abernethy, which I thoroughly recommend, the manufacture of the drum tracks was actually handled by a partner of Sequential's Japanese distributor, Moradera Musical Instruments. The drum tracks was pretty successful and they made around 8,000 of them, which is quite a lot for that period in history, and it was used by Prince, Tangerine Dream, Vince Clark and Warren Kahn, amongst others. The drum tracks was one of the first drum machines to have MIDI, which isn't surprising as Dave Smith, of course, was the person who invented it in collaboration with Roland. The samples are stored on EEPROMs, and so to change sounds you have to physically remove and replace them. The designs of these machines often allowed for the user to easily open them to do this. Digital memory was incredibly expensive at the time, so the samples are 8 bits at 25 kHz in order to keep the data down. Given that the samples are only a few kilobytes in size, that shows you how primitive and limited the digital technology was at the time. In fact, sustained sounds like the cymbals were too big to fit on a single EEPROM, and so the samples had to be split into four parts and loaded onto four EEPROMs, which play in sequence when triggered. The boring science bit. Those of you up on digital audio will know that the Nyquist frequency is half of the sample rate, over which you will get aliasing and artifacts. In CD audio, the sample rate is set at 44.1 kHz, and when we half that, we get a Nyquist frequency of 22.05 kHz. As the maximum of human hearing is 22 kHz, that means all frequencies above that can be removed without affecting the tonal balance of the recording. As the drum tracks only samples at 25 kHz, the Nyquist frequency is only 12.5 kHz, which is well inside the range of human hearing. If you filter above the Nyquist frequency, you'll be left with a very dull and boxy sounding sample, so they chose not to do that, and instead the aliasing and crunchy audio artifacts are an inherent part of the sound of the instrument, and as you tune down and the sample rate reduces, this becomes more and more exaggerated. In order to achieve the best sound they could, the samples were compressed and expanded to improve the signal to noise ratio. This is known as companding, and when these companded samples are played back through the digital to analog converters, this is called comdac, as in companded and run through a digital to analog converter. One of the cost saving measures on this unit was the use of shared channels. The top end machines like the Lindrum would process each sound individually, but the drum tracks cut this back by using a multiplexer to distribute the 13 sounds to six channels. This basically means the drum tracks has six voice polyphony and you can only play one sound from each channel at a time. On the plus side, the drum tracks employs quantized tuning and this allows you to program tuning per step or across MIDI with CC. It also has an accent on the unit and is velocity sensitive over MIDI.
I've multi-sampled every sound at every available tuning, plus two alternative EPROMs that came with my unit. The open source WAV files are available to be loaded onto your preferred sampler or DAW, but I've also made basic contact patches and contact multis. The download link is in the description. I hope you have a lot of fun making music with them. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.